Hello, today we're going to talk about um, day 17 and 18 of Scott's diary um, of a, a recovery of addiction and if you're thinking day 17 and 18 what what about all the previous days uh, not to worry I've linked a, um, a link in the description to the playlist of all of the previous days as well as uh, an introduction and each of the episodes with the days holds a valuable lesson and is something that uh, you can learn from and take inspiration from. So I'd definitely recommend if you haven't seen any of them or there's a few that you've missed, be sure to go back and, and catch up on them. And as a way of introduction and before we get into Scott's day 17 and 18, there's two quotes that I'd like to share like I say, by way of introduction that that introduced the episode better than I ever could. And the first one is a, a, a really popular Japanese proverb. And it is, fall down seven times, get up eight. And this is regarding uh, persistence, the ability to persist towards an endeavour. And in any uh, positive change you want to make in your life, you're going to fall, you're going to fall short and the most important thing is to get back up as soon as you can and get right back to uh, the plan that you had and as long as we persist, as long as we get up more times than we fall down, that's the main thing, you know, as long as we keep getting back up, keep pushing and keep trying, uh, then nothing can stop us. And the second quote is a very um, similar quote. It's a bit longer, but almost reflects the same thought. And it's from a, a book, The New Human Revolution. And it goes as follows. The absence of hardship is not happiness. True happiness and joy in life are found in not being defeated by hardship, by picking ourselves up again when we fall down, by weathering and triumphing, over adversity and with that let's get on to Scott's day 17 okay so it's day 17 today I didn't do a video yesterday um, I had some really really bad potentially life-shattering news yesterday I can't really um, can't really go into it too much because of the way it's resolved. But it was a massive test for me and I feel like I have to be honest and I I did, um, I relapsed yesterday. I didn't smoke weed, I had a drink, which um, was a really stressful day. Um, I had a drink and what goes hand in hand with drink with me is cocaine. So I feel like I need to be honest about it, there's no point in doing it, I'm not going to be honest about it. And the thing that happened yesterday could have, um, could have potentially cost me everything. Now, I, I'm, I can't go into it because of the way it's resolved but it was a fucking trigger from hell. And I felt shit today for it, but um, like I felt shit when I woke up anyway, hung over, sort of forgot what that felt like. And yeah, today I feel like I've let myself down. In a weird way, I'm kind of glad that I didn't turn to weed instead because Weed is something that turns into an everyday thing for me, whereas cocaine, I can take it or leave it whenever, when I go out every, once every couple of weeks. It's not as big of an issue in my life as the weed was. So I'm going to take, I'm going to extract that positive out of it. Now, I feel like it's very important to um, extract positives out of everything, even relapses. Now, if you can't extract positives out of everything then what are you looking at negatives all the time and where your focus goes it grows so 
have to take the positives out of it and it's the fact that I didn't turn to weed, which is normally my go-to thing, is a good thing, but I do feel like I've let myself down. I mean, I just wanted to do dry January. If like that's the way I was looking at this, obviously you do it day by day, but like, I had that as a goal in mind. And it doesn't matter how good I am now for the rest of the month, I've still not even managed to achieve a month clean so I don't even know if I should call this day 17 maybe I should be calling this day 1 again I don't know but here's what it is I have to be honest about it um, this will be Lewis's first time hearing that because I haven't spoken to him since obviously I had a good conversation with him yesterday when it first happened um when I spoke to him, I'd already, I'd already taken it, and it did resolve itself. Well, it didn't resolve itself. I had to resolve it in a way, which, like I said, I can't go into. But yeah, I'm a bit embarrassed to have to do this and to have to say this. But like I said, I have to be honest. I have to. No point me doing it if I'm gonna lie. So I don't know if Lewis wants to call this day one or day seventeen. I'll leave that down to him, but the most important thing for me now is to just get back on track, don't dwell on it, take it day by day again, you know, maybe that's my problem, maybe I'm looking at this now because it's it was day 16, 15, whatever, and now I'm looking at it and thinking is it day one again, maybe I should just be doing every day like it's day one. Um... I'm sure me and Lewis will have a conversation about this tomorrow, I haven't actually spoken to him today, um... I woke up really late, didn't go to bed till about half four in the morning, woke up at about ten. And I was an hour late for my first appointment, which I haven't been late for an appointment in a long time, and I didn't sell today. Coincidence? I don't think so. So yeah, that's that's my that's my day. This is my day. I don't know whether to call it day one or day something. I don't. I don't know. All I know is tomorrow I'm gonna to wake up, and I'm gonna continue doing what I've been doing. So there was Scott's day seventeen, and clearly, as you can see, he's um, he's feeling very low and down, and he's a little bit embarrassed. But what? everyone can take away from this is, is his honesty and his openness and his willingness to learn from things and th there's a quote that is, is not a failure if you learn something from it and all through the uh, the two weeks he's been mentioning like he, he would reference to oh I can't judge this day because there's been no triggers and I'm waiting for a big trigger and I've since spoken to Scott and it's a massive um it's a massive thing that occurred to him and again he, he it's not my business to share it but it it was it was a huge trigger and at the time of the conversation I thought oh it, no amount of my words are going to help him you know it's something that you have to deal with yourself and obviously in such uh, times you know, you have to do what you have to do. And, and he made the choice. And he's woke up this morning and he, he's had to deal with that choice. But through his positive attitude, through his outlook, he's already taken the positives out of it. He's already looking forward and extracting what he can learn from it. And so, yeah, this is it. It's, uh, it's just about, like I shared, that uh, Japanese proverb. He's back up. He's back up and he's already looking forward. And that's all we can do. Learn, don't dwell on it for too long, extract everything that we need, all the lessons, and then just get right back to where we were before. And that's where we're going now. Day 18. Okay, so it's day 18 today. <clears throat> I feel a little bit better about the relapse I had um, in regards to the coke. It made me feel really shit that I fucked up and 
one of my initial thoughts was, well, I might as well smoke a fucking spliff then. And I didn't. And I'm past that bit now. And I was just talking to Lewis and he said something that just just blew my fucking mind. Right? Now, I'm going to go into a bit more detail. Basically, I nearly lost my job. Okay? The job that I have fucking have grown to love that has become my addiction. I got caught speeding. Something really silly. But I've already got points on my licence. And there's still a potential that I could lose my job, if I'm honest. It's not completely resolved. And basically, it's down to the mercy of the court. I'm going to have to go to court. I've got too many points. And I'm going to have to beg them to not take my licence away from me because I'm going to lose my job and everything that I've built since I've come out of prison. So, Lewis just said to me that, and it it literally blew my mind, that nothing is ours. Not even our driving license. My driving license is not mine. It can be taken away. You know, our lives ain't ours. Like, you go around thinking that all these possessions, all these things that we have in our lives are ours. All these things that we try to get and gain and build. They're not actually ours. They can be taken away from us in any fucking moment. Even our kids, to, to an extent, our lives, everything. You know, the only thing that I believe now that I actually own is my mind. That is it. Like, Lewis was saying about, is our body ours, really ours? Well, no, because you can lose part of that. Someone can, you know, you could get struck down with some illness, then you can lose a body part. You can, anything can happen. You know, even, I suppose, even to a degree, your mind. You know, your mind can be influenced. It's really made me think. It, like, it has literally blown my mind. Um, but it's now making me appreciate all the things that I thought were mine that I now know are not. That like I'm on borrowed time. Like anything can be taken away, so everything I do have, I'm gonna appreciate a lot fucking more. And I've had a few shit days. I'm um, past it, and onwards and upwards now. So refocused. Back to where I was. Well, not quite, but I'm getting there. And clean living again. You know, I fucked up, held my hands up. I did say before, in one of my videos before, that I wouldn't fuck up because I didn't want to have to do that video. But if I did, I wouldn't lie about it. And I stuck to my word with that. So, yeah, okay, I relapsed. I I got told that I was going to lose my job, the job that I love, the job that has now replaced all my addictions is my job. And the thought of losing that sent me over the edge. You know, I love my job. I'm so good at it. And this job saved me. You know, people don't understand, this job saved me. Like, it saved me from going a way that I didn't want to go anymore living a life that I didn't want to live anymore. This job got me away from that. So the thought of losing that was very, very hard for me to take and I didn't handle it well. But I need to learn to be able to handle bad news. Like, all of these things aren't mine anyway, so they can be taken away from me and I need to react better to that. So, yeah, it's day 18. I don't care if I've relapsed. It is day 18 for me. I've put in too much work to press a reset button now. If I press a reset button now, then that's just going to give me more or less motivation to continue. Today is day 18, and I'm going to continue moving where I was a couple of days ago. Day 18, Scott's already feeling a bit better. He's digested uh, what happened uh, a bit more. And uh, yeah, as you can tell there, he's already moving forward and looking ahead. And he's already extracted the lessons and yeah, it was nice of him to share um, some more information about what happened and it was to do with his job, to do with his driver's license. So I think all of us can understand what that feels like, what it feels like when you have that massive sense of helplessness, when you have that massive, yeah, feeling like you can't do anything you're you're helpless in the in a situation and so yeah we we can all understand where he was and why he made the choice he made and if you can't yeah then um, then maybe you've never experienced something um as big a trigger as what he did and 
when I was communicating with him uh, about these things, yeah, the, the first thing that came to my mind was this this Buddhist principle of, of impermanence, that anything that comes to be, it will pass away and, and nothing is, is permanent. And so I thought, well, yeah, let me, this, is, this is what I'm associating with what's going on in Scott's life, so let me share it with him. And I did, and, and he, he benefited, because like, like he says, he, he really benefited from that concept, in the sense that, yeah, we might think all of these things are ours, my house, my kids, my car, my books, but w what, you know? All it would take is for the house to burn down, the car to be stolen, you know, or a terrible accident to occur to, to my, my children, God forbid. But then, you know, well, whatever it is, it is, is not ours. What can I do if my house is burning down and I want to try and hold on to it, you know? Good luck with that, you know? Good luck trying to hang on. And so this is the thing. In, in times, if we don't uh, study and, and practice Buddhist philosophy, in times we try and grasp tighter to things. When they're drifting away, we, we try and grasp tighter to them, whereas really we should be like releasing them, letting them go. And so, uh, yes, Scott's already, because of his positive outlook and, and his attitude towards life, he's already turned a corner, like that Japanese proverb says, fall down seven times, get up eight. He's already got up, you know, he didn't, he didn't self-loathe and be down for too long. He's right back up. And he started again. And so, yeah, this is a um, a, a really strong uh, part of his character that he's able to do that. And we can all learn a, a lot from that and get inspiration from that. And so, yeah, we've had a, a few conversations since then and he's feeling better and he's refocused um, and focusing on moving towards the end of the month. And so when we fall down, if we fail, all we need to do is extract the lesson that we needed to learn from it, pick ourselves up, dust yourself off and get right back to where you were as quickly as you can. If you need to take a few days to digest it, then, then no one can tell you anything about that. You know, we all deal with stuff in our own way. And so, yeah, day 17 and 18, for me, that, that was really valuable to see Scott's honesty, his openness and his perseverance. Um, yeah, if you in, in, enjoyed and, and got value from that episode, please uh, subscribe to the channel because the end of the month is coming and uh, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to see Scott back where he was um, before day 17. So thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Goodbye.